Hey, Gabby here from Ray Studios and today I'm going to be talking about the best lenses for the Canon EOS R. Hey guys, happy to see you all again and today I'll be talking all about the lenses that I use for the Canon EOS R. So, they're not all RF lenses, there are some EF lenses adapted with a RF to EF mount adapter. And when I say the best lenses, what I mean is actually the best lenses for me. There are other lenses that are much better, but they're also much more expensive or much more heavier. And I'm going to be talking about all the lenses that I have, why I bought them and how do they help into my work. So let's start first with RF lenses, native RF mounts. So first I got the Brighton Star 55mm f1.8. If you've been watching this channel, you probably know I love shooting manual lenses. This is a, a manual lens, all metal, the focus ring have hard stop, it's very nice to use. There are not uh, clicks on the, on the aperture ring, so it could be very helpful for video. I have done a video with this lens, I have a few picture samples and you can watch those in the review of the Brighton Star 55 1.8. Uh, to be honest, I don't use this lens much. This is more like a, you know, for my own entertainment. When I like to have some fun, I don't use it for work. The one that I, I really do use for work and a lot, and this probably lives on my camera all the time, and it's maybe my favorite lens ever on any camera since I, I grabbed a camera from a little kid till now. This is the best lens ever, really. Canon 35mm f1.8 IS macro this is a native rf mount so it mounts directly in the camera um, it's relatively small when i saw the pictures i saw it would be as small as the nifty 50 you can see it's not <laughs> it's much bigger but that being said still it's it stay relatively small and light it's so flexible it's so good the autofocus is super fast you have an extra ring to, that I like to use for ISO. So if I'm shooting videos like the one I'm shooting now, I can change the ISO just from here. I can change the focus. The focus is fly by wire, which not ideal, but it's very nice. It's still pretty good. And I don't know, it's just really good. The stabilization is good. And the fact that it also is a macro lens. I mean, you can get really, really close to scenes and it's still sharp and in focus. Uh, you get a lot of nice bokeh so for both videos, and photos, and this is my little workhorse, my favorite lens, without a doubt. If you have a, any Canon EOS R, 5, 6, whatever, um, I highly recommend this lens. It's the best lens for the RS mount, I believe. Then I have the TT Artisans 11mm f2.8. Now this is a fisheye lens, and like I say, if you've been following this channel, you will know I love ultra wide. I even like fish eyes quite a lot and I use them quite a lot. Uh, I use them for video. The thing is this 11 millimeters when you open the digital image stabilization in the camera uh, it becomes more like a 14 so that heavy distortion of the fish eye is not that heavy anymore it becomes less distorted. Already on video it's cropping a little right because you're not using the whole sensor it's not the 4x3 sensor you're using 16x9 so it's cropping a little bit the corners so it doesn't look so stretched then you put digital stabilization crops a little bit more and you can put enhanced digital stabilization and then it crops even more and it becomes more like a 15 millimeter so it's like yeah it's just an ultra wide so for pictures it's a fisheye um, then you can also grab kind of like the center of the picture correct the distortion yeah, again you go back to an ultra wide the build quality in this is amazing i mean it feels so good maybe it's the best build lens in this entire lineup it's all metal it's so well put together look at that front element this is just beautiful i use it for work not that often it's really fun to shoot quite recommended it's affordable as well so yeah you should consider that lens probably here is the 24 to 240 millimeter lens and I just did a review on this lens and it's a lot of mixed feelings with this one because it's good but it's not that good at, at the wide end it says 24 it's not really 24 it's more like a 30 millimeters because it's that heavy vignetting um, 
it's just very flexible, you know, you can shoot ultra wide, well not ultra wide, quite like wide, and then you can go to 240 millimeters. So if you're in a situation where you need a telephoto, and the pictures are actually quite decent. So it's just a very flexible lens. I, I like to have it, and because it's RF mount, and it's relatively small considering there is 240 millimeters, and go down to 24. It's still, it's, it's rather compact, and the building material is it's like, okay, it's all plastic, but it's good plastic. Same like, like the other RF lenses, like the 35. They're okay. Now, before I jump into EF lenses, I wanna talk adapters. So this is, is not like any other adapter you've ever seen before any other camera. Like if you have a Metabons adapter or any adapter for like Sony cameras to, to get EF lenses into Sony or, or EF lenses into a GH5 or something like that, you basically have no autofocus or you have very bad autofocus. With this, you have absolutely perfect autofocus in any kind of situation. You can go, into um, servo focus, you can video focus, continuous autofocus, you name it, it's just flawless. I have the, the original Canon adapter and then I have the Biltrox adapter. Lately, I've been only been using this. This has been living on a drawer for quite a while and that's because this has the ring and it's kind of helpful, especially when I shoot myself. Yet again, if I use an EF lens and shooting myself like this YouTube video, I change the ISO right there very easily and uh, it's basically exactly the same as the Canon it just works well there is no wiggle to it just put it in there and um, I highly recommend this one it's cost the same as this one that doesn't have a ring and it's half the price of the, the one Canon made with a ring and it's basically identical it just built trucks on it just copy it to perfection uh, I put a link in the description down below if you want to buy this one and now let's go into Canon EF lenses. Of course, I have the Nifty 50, like everybody should have this lens. So 50 millimeter F1.8 STM. This is the Mark II, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, I guess Mark II. And I don't use it that much, to be honest. Um, it's kind of like on between some of my favorite lenses, but because it's so small, I always bring it with me and sometimes throw in the camera and use it, but uh, you know, it's just so, so affordable. Since I paid somewhere around a hundred dollars for this brand new, and yeah, it's just so small, so tiny. Just put in your camera. Sometimes you think you might not use it and you might need it and just have it there, it's fine. Now the 85 millimeter F1.8, this is a lens that I was not expecting to like it that much, but I end up using it quite a lot. It's a lens that have a lot of flaws. Chromatic aberration is on the heavy side. Uh, unless you stop down to like a four, a five, you're gonna see some chromatic aberration, especially in high contrast situation. Other than that, it's pretty good. It have, it's very sharp, have amazing bokeh. Uh, it's kind of like the bokeh master for me. It's like when I need to throw the background, I put this on my camera and look how small this is. This is an 85 1.8. It's very small, even with adapter, it's still, very well balanced in the camera. And, you know, I love that it's a small autofocus very fast. I use it for video and for pictures. And because it's a small, you know, it's always on my backpack. I highly recommend this one. Now, I very recently got this one. This is the Yon Nuo 14 millimeter F2.8. And I feel like I just discovered a treasure, like it was hidden, like not many people know about this lens. And I don't know why. Like there are, there are many reviews uh, on YouTube. There are many reviews online. And to be honest, this lens is just mind blowing. The, the IQ in this lens is fantastic. And 14 millimeters is, is a Philos view that I love. I mean, it's super wide. And of course there is distortion like a 40 millimeter should have, but it's quite sharp. Distortion is well controlled. So this is a rectilinear lens. So it's not like the like the fish eye. This is heavy, heavy distortion. This just have a little distortion. Even so, this is 11 and this is 14. They're completely different lenses. This is a rectilinear kind of lens. And maybe the only downside for this lens, or maybe two downsides, is once you cannot use filters. 
So it's a bit tricky when you're shooting videos. And the other downside is heavy. It's more heavy than the Canon 40 mm f2.8. But that lens, I think, is almost the same as this one, optically speaking, but costs, I think, four or five times more than this one. And this is gonna surprise you, but I believe the Yon Noir have better view than the Canon. And the image quality is on par. So mind-blowing, this lens, highly recommended. It's not that expensive, totally worth it. I really love this one. Another lens that I really love is the Sigma R24 f1.4. This is a beast of a lens, like all Sigma art lenses. They're just so good. And again, I love small lenses. I don't like to carry a lot of weight. And this lens stay, look at that. That's not that big. And it's not that heavy either. I mean, there is some weight to it. Obviously it's a, it's a very, very good lens. It's packed a lot of glass. You have a 77 millimeter filter thread, so it will match some of my other lenses that I will talk in a second. So it makes it very easy to change the, um, the ND filters, uh, basically any filters. And you can get amazing bokeh at ultra wide, basically, because 24 is already like on ultra wide territory. And it's such a good lens for video. If you put the digital stabilization on, it's more like a 28 or something like that. And you know, like I say on video, everything crops a little. This is really, really good. I bought a second hand, very cheap, and, and it's in excellent conditions. So highly recommend this one as well. And now we are getting to some L lenses. So here I got the 16 to 35 millimeter F4 IS. And before this, I have the 17 to 35 F2.8 which is also an L lens, but a much older one. And then I have the 16 to 35 S2.8. Uh, I did review the 17 to 35, click right there. It was quite a flow lens, very soft corners, and very high chromatic operation. So you cannot, almost never use it wide open. And when you use that 17, it was very weak. Then the 16 to 35 millimeter F2.8 Mark II, same, it was a soft lens. I didn't quite love it. And for video, because no IS, even so it's ultra wide, when you go to 35, it's no longer ultra wide, it's just standard, you need IS, and I don't know. I didn't love it, I didn't love it. I did love this one, it's easy to handle, uh, you know, hand handheld shooting, video, pictures, have IS, and it's a hell of a lot sharper than the 16 to 35 and 17 to 35. Much, much, much sharper. It makes a huge difference. Uh, I mean, I'm not one of these guys that is like, oh, sharp, you have to be sharp, edge to edge, but uh, the other two lenses, they're actually soft, that you can actually see it. Like, I mean, you might shoot picture for your client and your client may look like the, the image is soft. I mean, you don't wanna go there. So 16 to 35, if you wanna ultra wide zoom, this is it. Of course, I got the 24 to 105. It's like, I don't know, it's like a must have. And sometimes I use it quite often. And sometimes it will live on the drawer for a long time because of this little beauty. 35 one point is so good. So yeah, sometimes I would like to take both together in case I need a zoom and I need the flexibility, you know, going to 105, going to 24, but I usually tend to use this all the time. So these two tend to travel together Sometimes I will travel with the, the 24 and 85. So I have this duo or sometimes I have this duo. So depending on what I'm doing, if I'm shooting more videos or pictures. And then I have this lens that it literally just live on a drawer. Not in a drawer, in the dry cabinet. That's what I have on my lenses. But yeah, it's a beast. Uh, as you can already know, I don't like big lenses, but when I do need a telephoto, this is what I have. It's decently sharp. Uh, it gives me a 120 millimeters to 400 millimeters. So this is Sigma DG. It has pretty good optical image stabilization and it goes from 4.5 to 5.6. Um, it focuses relatively quiet. I mean, it's not something I will use for video. I mean, it's something that I will normally use for pictures, obviously, and it's all right. I mean, if you need a telephoto lens, this is okay. 
I don't usually shoot telephoto. I don't, my work doesn't really need for me to have this lens, except on some rare occasions. But when I need it, here it is. It's very affordable, so why not? Let's just keep it. It won't make a big difference if I sell it or not. So that being said, most of the lenses you just saw, there are other live photo shoots that I have done in the studio or outdoors that you can watch the videos right there. There are also a few reviews, also click right there. And I put some links in the description down below where you can get some little discount. I'll get a little commission, so I will highly appreciate if you use those links. I'm Gabby from Ray Studios. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it, make sure to subscribe to the channel to watch more and I'll catch you up on the next one.